here's Dana Roberts and I talking about her beginning work with her beautiful Mustangs. Enjoy. You know, I always had this idea. This gets me to the Mustangs here, right? Because yes. I have this idea that, you know, for a long time, like I see the extreme Mustang makeover come out. I see what people are doing with these horses that have never been touched. And I'm just like, that's what I want to do, right? Like I love animals. I love the human animal bond. Um, and I'm just like, that's just the ultimate goal for me is to take an untouched horse and be able to create this bond where then you're working together. This is the horse that like you're riding and they trust you. Like, I'm like, great. But you know, where we were boarding, we didn't have the facility. It's just not realistic to be able to do this at the time. But this is always, this is something for a long time. I think 10 years I'm keeping in the back of my mind. I'm going to do this. Right. Um, and so I, we moved to, uh, we moved to Georgia, buy a little farm. And the first thing I do is buy a six foot round pen. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, let's go. Like, so we find out that there's actually a Georgia tip challenge. It actually happens to be right. Now, what the is street. the tip challenge? What does TIP yeah. stand for? So trainer incentive program. So oh, okay. You, so for this, it's a little bit different than an extreme Mustang makeover. Um, we don't have to ride our horses. We It's a competition where you still get 120 days, but you just have to do in-hand stuff. And I'm like, okay, like for my first Mustang, like I think I can do this. Um, got down to Georgia and, you know, down here, there was a lot more opportunity for like clinics and horsemanship and so in my Appaloosa, I'm doing a little bit different stuff than I've ever done. I'm doing obstacle challenges. I'm learning more about groundwork than I've ever learned. And I'm like, I really like this. Like the bond with my horse is better. Like, um, I really, really like it. So we, this gray horse right here, my first Mustang Wrangler behind me is the first Mustang we pick up. So That's like, beautiful. I like, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm ready. Um, tried to learn as much as I could about this process. And I think that's why I'm passionate about helping with these YouTube videos. Cause for someone like me, like I relied a lot on looking at those YouTube videos and seeing what people are doing and their training techniques and everything like that. Cause it can be hard to get linked up with someone who's doing that. Like I work full time. It can get expensive doing clinics. So I'm out here looking for, you know, information that's free so that I can see what's going on. So I get this guy, um, you know, we get him. Everyone there was amazing with loading him up, helping us out. Everyone in the Mustang community I'm learning is just absolutely fantastic and super helpful. So we get him, we get him unloaded and let like he is like very skittish. I realized 20 feet away, if I move my foot, he saw it and he's like, what just happened? And so, you know, it just completely changes. Like, yeah, you think you know how to work with horses, but this is completely different. Did I actually know a ton about horse behavior, like natural horse behavior? Um, not as much <laughs> I would have liked to, but it was, I bet you do now. Yeah. So that's the thing. It was a great learning experience. So there came, you know, we got so far, I got my first touches. I got a halter on, we're leading. And then I feel I hit this roadblock. I reach out to a trainer here who teaches me about positive reinforcement, worked super fantastic for this horse. We get that bond. He starts to, cause I said, here's the thing I'm getting so far. And I, you know, I'm, we're doing the things, he's doing the things that I can tell he doesn't trust me still. Like he doesn't trust me, so I can't move further. So by doing this positive reinforcement, we build this trust. And then once we got that trust, like, it's like, okay, here we go. Like, we're moving on, progressing with the training, doing all the things, not trying to look at what anybody else is doing in the competition because it's so hard because some people have done this so much longer than you. They're progressing so much faster, but right, this is our journey. So I don't even have it set in my mind that we're going to make it to the competition. Like, I'm just like, I'm just going to try. We I worked with this horse every single day, rain, shine, you know, we did a little something every day to progress forward. Um, and so comes by the competition time. Do I feel ready? No, <laughs> but you know what? Like he, he loads in the trailer. We 
take them to the competition. It's a big deal a feral horse loads in a trailer. That's yeah. huge. Yeah. Like, that's a big deal. It is. There's a it, lot of dressage horses that don't load in the trailer. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it was. And so we get to the competition and I just do my best. Do we do everything per per perfectly? Absolutely not. I We did not place. We did not get a ribbon. Did we get in the ring? Did he do everything perfectly? No. Did he load in the trailer there? No. <laughs> like in the competition. Um, but did we try? Yeah. And what did he behave himself? Yeah. And it That's was huge. great. And I learned so much. And then I realized, wow, like there's so much more I need to learn. So I start taking clinic, you know, we decide to keep them. We take them back home. I start taking clinics. I start to learn more about horse behavior and by doing that, we then got a second one for a tip challenge. And, mm -hmm. you know, we had different challenges. This is a different horse, a different personality. But I, I did learn a lot from my first one. So from learning that, is it a little, little easier? Yeah. But then I still continue to learn, which I absolutely think is amazing with these Mustangs because the personality is just a little bit different. Um, and then we get my third one and now I'm more experienced. Okay. My timing is better. I understand horse behavior more. I'm not taking it personal when, you know, they don't, you know, want to join up with me. You know, I'm just like, okay, like I'm not, you know, I'm not being like, oh, I'm, I'm a terrible trainer. I can't do this. I'm like, now I have to think outside the box and what's going to work for this horse. So that, that's a really cool progression. It sounds like a tremendous journey, and you had so much fun. And now I understand that there was a tip award, and which horse was that with? That you uh, were tip trainer. Yeah, so the the tip trainer is something you apply for, but I think maybe what you're talking about is that human animal bond award. Yes. Yes. One. So as a there was a jump start award for re registered vet text um, for the human animal bond. So I did. I submitted my story about yeah I do a lot of fear free work in the small animal side of things, but I transfer that to the horses and I actually really wrote about my experience um, gentling the mustangs and that human animal bond that you create and um, wrote an article for them and ended up winning the human animal. Um, bond award for the jumpstart technician award so that was really amazing for the work with the mustangs so on that Great. website you can see my article and it kind of talks a little bit about kind of my experiences with the horses and stuff like that but it really is a great bond so i got wrangler when he was three years old and i think he's turning eight this year but it has been great because I've done a little bit of everything with him um just to get him experiences um i mean we have sorted cattle. We've gone trail riding and camping. Uh, we've done a little ranch riding. We've done groundwork clinics, obstacles, like take them to everything. And there it comes into, we started Western dressage because we were looking for events to take them to that were kind of low key. Um, you know, you can start out an intro at walk trot. That's my, that was my comfort level at the time when I first started riding him. So we started going to those um, after my, I rode at a barn that a lot of the girls were doing classical dressage. They were telling me, hey, hey, there's people riding Western at this, you know, come with us, come with us, right? You can walk and trot, let's go. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'll Is try that what it they out. said to you, you can walk and jog, so you should go, you should go to a Western dressage class. Yeah, they're like, you can, awesome. you can do it. Like, you, you can, can walk and jog. You well, you can, <laughs> you did. Yes. So, I mean, then we started with this, like with everything, those small goals. Okay, we'll go. Um, I think we were talking about this in the last uh, WDAGA talk about like going as a non-compete, right? Like I went, I signed up for a class, but my goal that day wasn't actually to, if I didn't get in the show ring, it wasn't going to be the end of the world. It was just to get there, unload the horse, brush him, walk him around, you know, make sure he wasn't losing his mind, yeah. <laughs> you know, with all the commotion. And, um, you know, if we got tacked up, we schooled and we got in the ring, that was just going to be like the icing on the cake. And then we got there, he did all that. We went in the ring um, wow. and he did well, you know, and we got, then we get the comments and, you know, I told you like when I started Western Dressage, I had no idea that like you got a paperback with comments 
And I, I was like, wow, I was like this, I enjoyed it. Cause I grew up in hunter jumper. Everybody went into the ring or you were, you know, you won off of like how fast you were jumping or, you know, you were all in a ring against all other people and, you know, the judge decide who's yeah, first. Second, you know, and third. sometimes in those kind of classes, you never really clear why you won today and tomorrow on the same horse in front of a different judge. It seemed like almost the same performance and you didn't win. So I found yeah. that it's one of the reasons I gave up that kind of showing because I it just didn't. It, it's hard to understand. You know, you just yeah. like, oh. Whereas in Western dressage, you probably liked it when you got the paperback and they said, hey, I judged you on this and this. And if you did this better, you could do better. Yeah, because I didn't have that experience. Like, you know, doing the showing the other way. Yeah, I, I had fun. I liked doing it. But uh, when you're really trying to learn how to, like, progress in your journey and get more skills, like, I found that super helpful because it was just like, okay, now I'm learning about what energy means, about being active. Like, I, I didn't know what that was. Um, and so now, like, we're getting there. And I, you know, I touched base on the fact, too. And I was like, well, this is, this could be really great. Like, Wrangler tends to be kind of a lazy horse. And, you know, he'll do that super slow jog. But, you know, he'll drag the back toes and he'll drag his toe right off. And I said, now that I know what being active is and having energy and, you know, getting that connection. He doesn't do that anymore, you know? So it's helping me as a rider. Like I've learned a lot of balance <laughs> and to be a better rider for him. And then he's also using himself better. So then, you know, hopefully I can be riding this horse for a very long time. <laughs> and that's our goal. And Thanks for watching. Don't forget, subscribe, like, and share. Also check out IdaNorrisDressage.com and Ida Norris Western Dressage on Facebook.